Good afternoon, I'm Mahalia Joseph and you're watching C News Live. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley has made several changes to his cabinet. A statement from the Office of the Prime Minister asked the President to reassign Franklin Khan from Minister of Rural Development and Local Government to Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, Mr. Kazim Hossein as a Senator and Minister of Rural Development and Local Government, and to reassign Mr. Fitzgerald Hines from Minister of Works and Transport to Minister of Public Utilities, and appoint Mr. Rohan Sinanan, a Senator, as Minister of Works and Transport. Other changes include the removal of Sarah Budu as a Senator, remove Nicole Oliver as Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, and remove Ansel Antoine as Minister of Public Utilities. The President was further advised to reassign Stuart Young from Minister of State in the Office of the Prime Minister and to Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister. This means that Mr. Young has been elevated to a full-fledged Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister. He retains his portfolio as Minister in the Ministry of the Attorney General and Legal Affairs. To some other news now, popular local actress and comedian Shirley Bueller King has died. Details are still coming in, but C News understands that the 74-year-old died at the Shigonas Health Facility this morning. King shot to national prominence in the 70s as she started her stage career as Bueller. The character endured for decades as she appeared in several TV shows and commercials deep into the 1990s. King received the Hummingbird Silver in 1998 and was also the recipient of the Kasik Lifetime Achievement Award. The acting police commissioner Stephen Williams will be back out to work on Tuesday and will report for duty at 8 a.m. This was confirmed by Mr. Williams this morning as he spoke with C News. However, he did not want to speak on any matters in the public domain until he returns to his post. Questions arose on Sunday as the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, said he isn't sure who will be heading the police from today. He made the comment at the PNM's local government election campaign launch. In this protracted and dire situation of runaway crime and criminality, I face tomorrow morning not knowing who is or who will be in charge of the police service. And I'm head of the National Security Council. While Mr. Williams was on vacation, Harold Phillip was acting as the police commissioner. Dr. Rowley acknowledged that there is a crime problem in the country and said while billions have been spent on fighting crime, the country is waiting too long to reap the benefits. To the extent that there are criminals walking among us for whom their idea of a job or putting down a work is a stuffing out of the life of the next hapless victim for a fee. The time has come for us to take a fresh look at the model of policing which we have been practicing over the years. And the Police Service Commission has also begun ad advertising for Trinidad and Tobago based consulting firms to help with the recruitment of a commissioner and a deputy commissioner of police. In a full-page advertisement in a Sunday newspaper, the PSC said proposals have to be delivered by 2 p.m. on November 18th. Police are investigating a shooting incident in Dabadi on Sunday evening, which claimed the life of one man. Police understand that around 3 p.m., 42-year-old Maurice Clifford of Sunbeam Street, Red Hill, was helping a group of men assisting with a construction project at his neighbor's home, when gunmen approached. The men walked up to Clifford and shot at him at close range. Clifford attempted to flee into nearby bushes but collapsed after being wounded several times. His attackers fled the scene on foot. Clifford was taken to the Eric Williams Medical Science Complex by his brother but was pronounced dead on arrival. While you're watching the C News Live report at noon, remember you can keep up to date with all the latest news on our website at ctvtt.com or you can check out our Facebook and Twitter pages at C News Live. Trinidad and Tobago is in the process of finalizing arrangements to import frozen duck meat from Suriname. However, there needs to be some legislative changes first. 
CARICOM Council for Trade and Economic Development last Friday urged the authorities to take the necessary steps to resolve the issue in a timely fashion. However, one local farmer wants government to place more emphasis on importing items which the country is underproducing. Kotechi and Agriculture Minister of Dominica, Johnson Drago, noted that since legislative procedures could take some time, Trinidad could not offer a timeline when the matter would be resolved definitely. Drago said that the matter was discussed by the ministers and that there was consensus on the undertakings given by both parties to work the situation out. It was reported that since December 2015, this country has been preventing the importation of meats from the Suriname Duck Farm, the Ducks and Club to Trinidad. Initially, Trinidad raised concerns that the processes of the duck facilities were not in conformity with international food safety measures. According to Chief Veterinary Officer of Trinidad, David Kangaloo, the two countries are close to resolving the issues. Another official said there is a draft cabinet note that has been prepared and will be taken to Parliament. Once that is accepted and approved, Suriname will have to be placed on the schedule to allow the legal imports of duck meat from Suriname. Now, when contacted, Shiraz Khan said government needs to focus on reducing the food import bill. Our farmers are faced with a problem. The problem that we are faced with is that a lot of us, we produce and have little or no processing taken place in Trinidad in terms of duck. We have, we have markets that we are already trying to get into export duck. Why can't we understand that we have to look for more markets for our farmers rather than compete with our farmers and bring in things? They are commodities in agriculture, even products that we are very short in terms of production. Why can't we look for bringing that at a more reduced price to the farmer, look for a cheaper market, rather than bringing the things that the farmers are already both in production and have good knowledge and spend a lot of investment in? He said government needs to ensure there is protection for local farmers. Time now for a look at our weather forecast. Sunny conditions will be interrupted by a few light to moderate showers in varying localities. Some of the afternoon showers will become heavy and thundery, favoring northern and western areas of Trinidad. Settled evening and mostly clear night despite the odd shower. Gusty winds and street or flash flooding may be expected in heavy downpours and or thunder showers. The Minister of Finance, Colm Imbert, has refuted an allegation made in a daily newspaper on Sunday that Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley advised him not to pay Media 21 for services rendered to the National Lotteries Control Board through GTEC or otherwise pending a review of the contract. A statement from the ministry said the story headlined NLCB keeping eye on 10-year GTEC deal is simply untrue. The minister explained the Minister of Finance does not make payments to any provider of services to the NLCB because NLCB is a statutory body that makes its own payments in accordance with its own procedures. Secondly, the Prime Minister gave no instructions or advice to the Minister of Finance about this or any other matter regarding contracts or payments at NLCB. Finally, it said the assertion in the article that efforts to get a comment from the Minister of Finance on this matter were unsuccessful is not acceptable. A bill to reform the current local government system will be taken to Parliament before mid-2017. This was announced by the then Minister of Local Government, Franklin Kahn, on Sunday as the PNM revealed their 137 candidates to contest the local government election on November 28th. We are going to fight this local government election campaign on our reform agenda. It is no longer business as usual. And this Dr. Rowley's PNM administration wants to guarantee the nation that the local government reform exercise is real. It will happen. We have already drafted our policies. The legislative reform is now being drafted by the Honorable Stuart Young, Minister in the Office of the Attorney General. And within the first half of calendar year 2017, all the legislation will be tabled in Parliament to a joint select committee. The Minister reiterated that with the proposed model, each regional corporation will be in charge of their own district with little intervention from the central government. As you heard earlier, Minister Khan has been reassigned to the Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries in a cabinet reshuffle announced in a news release by Prime Minister Dr. Rowley this morning.
and the Coalition Against Domestic Violence says it is deeply saddened by the death of Hal Graves, also known as Roy. In a statement, its chairperson Diana Mahabir Wyatt said his TV series on domestic violence is still the best and most influential series ever presented in Trinidad and Tobago. It went on, it went on to win the Commonwealth Prize for the best project throughout the world for the Canadian Gender Equity Fund that sponsored it. She said he was a legendary mediator and a social community worker and the best argument against the cult of credentialism that has ever been produced. It's Monday and some very interesting developments happening today in the energy markets relating to Baker Hughes and OPEC. Let's have a look at some of the market's biggest stories and our energy correspondent Roger Dorica has the latest. Three big plays in the hydrocarbon market happening this Monday. GE has announced it will merge its oil and gas division with energy services provider Baker Hughes in a $32 billion tie-up. The move wasn't a surprise with the market beginning to twitch last Friday over the news that it will create a direct competitor to Schlumberger, the world's largest energy services provider. So, why is this deal particularly important to Trinidad and Tobago? That's because Baker Hughes has an office here, and they do supply the energy sector with industry services. In May, Baker Hughes and Halliburton had failed to merge due to opposition from U.S. regulators. Energy analysts say the partnership with Baker Hughes could help GE to transform its hydrocarbons gas division and emerge as a larger player in the sector, which has been going through a period of depression following low oil prices and cautious investment by industry players waiting on a recovery in markets. Oil has hit its lowest level in a month after weekend talks between OPEC and other major producers failed to yield concrete details on an accord to reduce the global crude surplus. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries ended talks with non-members such as Russia and Brazil on Saturday without a joint commitment to cut production. Oil has fluctuated near the $50 a barrel mark amid uncertainty over whether OPEC can implement the first supply cuts in eight years at its official November meeting. OPEC had agreed in Algiers last month to trim output to a range of 32.5 million to 33 million barrels a day and is due to finalize the deal at its November 30th summit in Vienna. The U.S. oil giant Chevron has logged a 5 billion U.S. dollar cost blowout at its Wheatstone LNG project in Western Australia, bringing total cost overruns at the seven LNG mega projects approved during the resources boom to $49 billion. The Wheatstone cost overruns resulting from engineering underestimates and equipment delays mean Woodside Petroleum faces up to $650 million U.S. dollars in extra costs now. This latest incident follows 17 billion US dollars worth of blowouts so far on the Chevron operated Gorgon LNG project and helps cement Australia's reputation as the most expensive place in the world to build energy projects with more than 200 billion dollars of LNG spending by global giants unlikely to come close to making their expected returns. The Opposition United National Congress says it is ready, available and keen to work toward remedying the legislative loopholes in the Strategic Services Agency Act as it has facilitated the abuse of power. In a statement, the UNC described as shocking revelations about extortion and subterfuge at the Strategic Services Agency SSA. It said such information confirms the validity and timelines of proposals presented by the Opposition during the recent parliamentary debate on amendments to the relevant law. The opposition said it had sought to avoid these and similar dishonest and far-reaching occurrences through thoughtful and carefully researched amendments to the Strategic Services Agency Bill when the proposals were presented during debate in the House of Representatives and the Senate last May. It explained the government high-handedly and callously rejected each measure. Eva, fashionista, model, swimwear designer, entrepreneur Sonia Polonais is no stranger to Trinidad and Tobago's fashion industry. Crowned Miss Plus Size Caribbean in 2012, she has been working to inspire and empower full-figured women across the region. Sonia is also the owner of Closet Red, a boutique which offers fashionable clothing and image consultancy to plus-sized women. She says her decision to be a plus-sized retailer stemmed from a very bad experience. I've had some of the biggest 
the biggest fashion houses in Trinidad select you to do a show and or not select you because they're like darling we love how you look but there just is nothing to fit you I've had a casting director look over a designer look over at a designer and watch men say do you have anything to fit her and his designer's like no it's heartbreaking these those sort of experiences kind of tend to break your spirit they break it they try to break your spirit and as well as your drive and your interest so it sometimes feel like you're pushing a big boulder up a hill in this week's I Am Every Woman feature, Sonia shares the intimate details of her journey as a plus-size model in the Caribbean. We'll have her full story in the C News Report at 7. Well, that brings us to the end of the C News Report at noon. I'm Mahalia Joseph. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>